welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time, and following several requests, we're going to experiment using the ChatGPT AI chatbot to write Raspberry Pi Python code. So, let's go and get started. Right. Here we are running a 2GB Raspberry Pi 4 with a clean install of Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye. Over on the desktop, I've done very little other than creating a folder called Python Code in which we're going to store our Python code, and I've also made a few scaling changes. So let's go across to Programming and run up Sony, which we're going to use for executing our Python code. And I've also here already launched a web browser where I've gone to the OpenAI website. And on this site, we can access ChatGPT by clicking on Try on the Web like that. And as you can see, we have to log in. And we can either log in using an OpenAI account, which we can create if we want to, or we can use an existing account. And here, I'm going to use a Microsoft account. So I'll just log in. And here we are in the ChatGPT interface, where it asks us to send it a message I'm going to give it a command I've already saved in the buffer. I've got that there, which as you can see, I'm asking it, please write some Python code that asks the user their name and then prints it seven times. So let's press enter on that and let it do its thing. And it's doing it already. Very exciting. Oh, look, it said certainly. That was nice of it, hasn't it? And it's written the code and it's even explained what it's done. And if we just, just scroll up here, we can see the code. And if we just click on copy code like that, we can go back to Thony and we can paste the code into there like that. And I'll save it just to be tidy. And if we now execute the code, there we go, it's asking for my name. And if I just press enter, there we are, it's printed it seven times. So already I've shown the principle of asking ChatGPT to do something, copying the code it's created, pasting it into Thony, executing it, and it works. However, as you probably noticed, we haven't just got a 2 gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4 here, we've also got it connected to an LED, which is wired to pin 12 and then through a current limiting resistor to the ground rail. So, can ChatGPT make this LED flash? Well, we'll have a go, we'll go back across to ChatGPT and we'll ask it to Please write some Python code to continuously flash an LED connected to physical pin 12 on a Raspberry Pi. So let's execute this. There it goes. And we'll speed on through until it's stopped generating. And there we are. It's finished. And we have to scroll to find what it's done. It should be somewhere under here. There we are. That's what we asked. And here is the code it has actually created. So let's copy that code like that and go back across to Sony, create ourselves a new document like that, paste in the code, and we'll save it just to be a nice and neat. And just before we execute this code, let's just take a look at uh, the code it has written, where, as we can see at the top, it's importing the libraries for GPIO and time, and then it's setting the GPIO mode to use board numbering. And this is important because there's two ways you can address the GPIO pins on a Raspberry Pi using either board numbering, which is based on the physical pin numbers, or BCM, which is based on a set of defined GPIO numbers, as we can see in this diagram. And that's why when I asked the question, I did note we had our LED connected to physical pin 12. Anyway, it's then gone on here in the code to set the pin to an output, which is obviously a good idea. And then if we go down a bit further, it's got a little loop to continuously flash the LED. So, Shall we try it out? Why not? Let's bring in a shot of the LED and also run the code. And uh, yes, we've got a flashing LED. Isn't it exciting when we get LEDs flashing? Well, just generally in the world, it's a very exciting thing to be happening. However, you might be thinking, well, ChatGTP has written the code to flash the LED, but how did you know to wire it up? Maybe you don't know how to wire things up and you therefore need to have ChatGTP tell you about the wiring and the code. Can it do that? Well, of course it can. So let's just uh, go back to chat GPT like that, where we could say something like provide wiring and Python code to flash an LED connected to a Raspberry Pi. There we go. 
and once again we'll wait until it's stopped generating and if we now scroll down we can probably find what's going on where are we where's what we asked there it is look please provide wiring and python code it says certainly here's the details on the wiring and then beneath that it's provided details for the code Greetings! Let's now try something harder, and for this I've added three more LEDs which are wired up like this. And I'm going to ask ChatGPT if it can code a running light. Just to note, I plan to use five LEDs, but I've lost one of my current limiting resistors in the carpet. Anyway, let's test out ChatGPT by asking it the question I've written down here, which is to write Python code to make a continuously running light using LEDs connected to physical pins 12, 16, 18, and 22 on a Raspberry Pi. So let's press enter and cross our fingers. And whilst this is generating, note that in the last section of the video, I did expect things to work as I'd tried them out first. But from this point forward, I've no idea what's going to happen. This is very much an experiment. Anyway, it's done something, so let's uh, scroll up and find the code. There it is, let's uh, copy the code. And I've got Thonny waiting for us, and we'll paste that in like that. And uh, shall we just simply save and run and see what happens? And, uh, oh yes, that works pretty well, doesn't it? We've got a little running light. Seems to be a bit sort of hesitant between the different parts, but uh, that's perfectly good. I've got no problems with that. Although, let's go back to the code over here and stop it. And I don't actually like having that little uh, sleep thing there. Let's uh, get rid of that. I think it would be better without that. Let's get rid of that, like that. And uh, let's make that slightly longer, like say that. Let's now save that and run it again. And uh, that's more like what I was thinking about, but that's what a human thinks rather than what ChatGPT thinks. That's, uh, that's working very well. However, there is one more refinement I would like to see, which is to get the light to bounce back and forth. So let's go back to ChatGPT. And of course, it all comes down to how we phrase the question. And I'm going to start out being cheeky. I'm simply going to ask it initially all to code to make LEDs bounce back and forth like a Cylon. And of course, it might not have watched Battlestar Galactica. But uh, let's see what this does. There we are, it has finished. And if we just go down here, uh, like a Cylon, we can copy the code. Has it done the whole code again? I presume it has. Let's just uh, copy that. That's what I was expecting. Let's go back here, Control A, get rid of that, and just uh, paste that back in like that. And hopefully, let's just save again and run, and uh, yes, it's doing roughly uh, what we anticipated. Although again, I'd like to edit it a little bit. So let's just come back and do that. There we go, and if we run it a final time, yes, there we are. Oh dear, it's something doing strange at the end, isn't it? Dum, 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 dum. Something slightly strange going. It comes back and it doesn't quite come back right, does it? Let's just go back to the code and stop it again. See exactly what's going on here. It's running across a pattern and then reversing a pattern. And, ah, but the pattern is the whole lot, isn't it? 12, 16, 18, 22, 18, 16, back to 12 again. Why have we got this second bit? I think we can just get rid of that entirely like that. And uh, that should work okay. Shall we try that and uh, save and uh, run and... Uh, Yes, that's exactly what I thought it should do. There we are, adding some human editing, we've got the expected result. Right, I've now wired up an SG90 servo to the Raspberry Pi, and if we look in the wiring diagram, we can see more clearly what's going on. We've got the five volt power and ground connected to pins four and six on the Raspberry Pi. You don't normally power a servo from a Raspberry Pi, they're normally powered separately, but one SG90 for a test will be fine. And then the PWM, the pulse width modulation control signal for the servo, is connected to Raspberry Pi pin 11. So, let's go across to chat GPT, where I phrased an instruction for it, as we can see, 
write Python code to control an SG90 servo with its PWM input connected to physical pin 11 on a Raspberry Pi. Servo should turn to 90 degrees, pause two seconds, then turn to zero degrees, wait for two seconds, and repeat three times. And if this works, I'll be very impressed indeed. So let's give it a go. And there we are, it's finished. That took it quite a while to generate all of that, but uh, that's understandable, I had quite a bit to do. So uh, let's uh, copy the code, go across to Thonny and uh, paste the code like that. There it is, it looks like it's set up things to control the server, but we will see, we'll just save that and run the code. It works. It worked again. Yes, oh, came back a bit quickly then, didn't it? But it depends what it's doing on its repeats, doesn't it? But, uh, and there and uh, back again, and there we are. Has it finished? I think it's finished, hasn't it? There we are, let's run it again. It's too exciting to run just once. Not a brilliant servo and controller from the Raspberry Pi, but the principle works. And uh, if you want to learn more about controlling servos from a Raspberry Pi, I've got a whole video about servo control on a Raspberry Pi. But uh, for now, I think we've proved that ChatGPT is capable of coding for a Raspberry Pi servo. Right, I've now added a camera to our Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi high quality camera, no less, and I'd like ChatGPT to write some Python code to capture video. However, we may have some issues here because as ChatGPT notes, it has limited knowledge of the world and events after 2021 because it was trained on datasets up to this point. And this matters because the latest version of Raspberry Pi OS, known as Bullseye and launched in November 2021, and which is what we're running here, removes support for the Pi camera and other modules traditionally used for camera control. And so it's likely that the code we're about to generate will not work in this latest version of Raspberry Pi OS, where different camera software now exists. But that all said, let's give things a try. As you can see, I've phrased our request. I've connected a high quality camera to the Raspberry Pi. Please write some Python code that will record 10 seconds of video. So let's give this a go. There we are. And as expected, it has used the uh, Pi camera module. It's just coming off the screen, now where is it? Up, uh, up there, somewhere, definitely it's using the Pi camera module. But I will copy the code, show you what happens. We'll put it across here and paste it in and uh, save. And when we run this, it won't work. It'll uh, presumably give us an error. There we are, module not found. If we look down here, it probably tells us more about, yes, things aren't working. So what I'm going to do is this, and here we are, on exactly the same Raspberry Pi, running a different version of Raspberry Pi OS. To be specific, we're now running Raspberry Pi OS Legacy, which supports the traditional camera commands. And if we look online on the page for Raspberry Pi operating systems, you can see here where we can download Raspberry Pi OS Legacy. It's still pretty recent, but it's just got that legacy camera support. So if we go across to Sony like that, I've loaded in the code that ChatGPT created for us. So let's now run the code like that. And nothing will seem to happen, but uh, I'm just going to move my hand around. You don't know what I'm doing, do you? But anyway, I'll be moving my hand around because it's actually recording some video for uh, 10 seconds. And in a second, it'll hopefully finish. There we are, video recording is complete. And uh, where is it recorded it to? It hasn't actually given it a folder, so it'll be wherever this code is, which is sitting in Python code. So let's just uh, find that. Hopefully this has worked. There is a uh, Python code. Yes, there's our video file, and if we run it up, very exciting. Oh look, it's our friend the hamster, and there's my hand moving around as I talked about a second ago. So as you can see, if you want to use ChatGPT to write Python code involving a camera on a Raspberry Pi, you have to use Raspberry Pi OS Legacy. And this is not a ChatGPT issue, it's a Raspberry Pi issue linked to the latest versions of Raspberry Pi OS no longer supporting legacy camera software. Generative AI software such as ChatGPT may signal the next step in the evolution of computer programming. Rather than writing code from scratch, increasingly the job of a programmer may be to accurately describe what needs to be done and then to edit code generated by an AI. 
But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.